Welcome everybody, I'm Rambo and welcome to Echoes of New Eden. I got an excellent show for you today. Usually I'll go over some game news, but we don't have much this week. We'll be talking about scanning in the roundtable segment, and then we'll get into the interview that I had with Rep about his neutral citadel. Let's dive right in. So like I said earlier, no big news coming from Evaco's devs right now. We're still waiting patiently for the scanning update. So let's get into the roundtable segment and then the interview. Welcome to the Eve Echoes Roundtable. This segment of the show will discuss an Eve Echoes topic provided to us by a fan of the show. Are you guys ready? We're ready. Ready. All right. Today we got E Rock, famous E Rock. Howdy. Turpish. What's up, Turp? Hello, hello. And common, <laughs> common roundhouse table talker, Rhino. <laughs> hello. They, it, it's funny I say that because all three of you have been pretty much on every episode so far. So, <laughs> anyway, let's get this topic going. And the winner, and the winner is. is... All right. Okay. This will fit for the new update coming out next month that everybody's anticipating. What are your expectations for the scanning update when it comes out? E Rock. Expectations. Now, this should be what is your expectations or, you know, for regularly and what are your expectations versus what they're showing? So, if anyone who's looked at it, you know, the, the, the timer, uh, the cooldown for the PDP timer was 60 minutes. For a pvp scan which uh e they'd have to do some serious reduction of that time with skills um and i think no one's really gonna be happy with a one hour timer for a pvp scan which is, is, when you compare to eve online um I, it's been like a decade since i played the game but i i know it was measured in seconds or a minute for for scan probes uh it was not an hour um, and I think that, you know, people are going to be excited that they, hey, we can scan things down. Um, but, you know, you, with the way it's set up, it, you scan somebody, um, they are going to get a notification that they're being scanned, you know, let's say in their story mission. And then they're going to move. Like, how are you going to scan them again if they move to a, to a dead space location or anything else like that? Like, I, I think that that's going to kind of be fucked up i don't i don't think people are gonna be happy about it um uh, so it really i'm really hoping that they've heard enough complaints about the length of time with pvp scanning cooldown that they make some serious changes to that um but other other than that with, with scanning it's uh biggest concern for most people is um hey let's find some good you know pv content uh with Anoms, and you know that you can scan down, or wormholes you can scan down. Like, please give us some good content there, especially with wormholes. And uh, and hey, you know, um, outposts are gonna be scannable, so that is gonna really gonna change a big dynamic in null sec in terms of defending your space and be able to root out enemy outposts and also on the offensive as well with that. So, but but really, I think the cooldown is probably the biggest question mark for scanning overall. Hmm. Yeah. Interesting. Now, my expectations are none. Uh, I had no Eve online experience with scanning to even know what really it's all about. So everything that I've learned has been, you know, what has been brought to us by the devs. So what do I expect? Um, maybe some more, maybe uh, more frequent dead space drops. Uh, if you use the PvP scan, maybe the dead spaces will drop uh, more frequently. And uh, sure, they're not able to be seen in the HUD. You know, you'd have to scan them down, but you'd have unlimited scans in that sense compared to the PvP side where it's a one-hour cooldown. Um, 
<clears throat> as, as far as the cooldown, though, it's like if you scan somebody and they end up moving to a planet or elsewhere, it, does that ping stay on them, on, on the person or on the object that got scanned? And then does it follow, you know, if they decide to move? That's a good question, actually. I, I hadn't thought of that. Because if you scan them down and then you go to the dead space that they're at and all of a sudden they're not there, then uh, then I guess you just waste a, wasted a scan. So people yep. could be pretty mad about that, yeah. And it's going to make, I think what they could be trying to do with that is forcing them to, be, to have people in larger fleets to have scanning be useful. Um, because you're going to need multiple people in order to be able to, everyone use their cooldown. Um, so it's, they're just gearing more towards the group play with that, which is great and all, but you don't need a freaking hour cooldown. That's absurd. Um, personally. <laughs> And maybe it will go down with skills. We just don't know it yet. Yeah. But even if well, it's at like... The, um, at the, you know, you look at the skills and stuff like that, but I mean, like, look what they did with ore compression. I mean, even maxed out, it's useless. Yeah, it's like 50% max. So if they could, if they do a similar 50% reduction, it's still a half hour. Um, you know, it's something... It's, it's, it's cool down for scanning should be minutes. Like, uh, five, ten minutes max uh, just to start off with. For PvP, then, though? Like, cool down. For PvP, it's like it, so. you could you could scan down an entire system, like every single outpost or whatever, <laughs> in that system in a matter of minutes. Well, it I, might be a so, bit overpowered. So, well, so I think you guys are missing an angle. So, so, so think so. When we're in battle, what are we doing, right? So we're shooting cannons, we're blowing up missiles. You know, we're, mm -hmm. we're shooting off stuff. We're creating disturbances, right? So one of the things that devs were 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 pitching at was like you'd be able to tell. It was a cruiser, or it's a battle cruiser. Or you might be able to tell it's a Caldari versus a, mm -hmm. a serpent that's based on composition. And so we just we're we're all kind of guessing this one guess on these two screenshots showing that sixty minute cooldown. So in one case, maybe it's a sixty minute cooldown, but maybe what you're trying to do there is maybe that's the citadel or outpost scan, where because it's passive doesn't have a whole lot of things coming and going from it. We're not blowing things up. It's literally taking that long to filter out the background noise for you to find what is, in essence, uh, almost a nerd piece of metal hanging in space. Whereas on the player side of the PvP, those scans are coming in. We're warping. We've got afterburners on. You know, So in theory, they should be making more noise. You, you'll think, like, you put the, like, this is a submarine game lens on, is you've got yeah. something out there making almost no noise, which is your outpost, and you have something out there making a piece or load of noise, you know, blowing stuff up. You should be able to find one of those faster than the other. So I've wondered a lot if the 60 minute wasn't necessarily a cooldown, but maybe uh -huh. it was the 60 minutes trying to do that passive scan for an outpost. I hope you're right. I well, really do. Um. Well, because then, then it's an investment, right? The, if, if you're trying to find the outpost, to protect your own space. Um, yeah. I mean, I, I cannot count the number of folks I've known that have dedicated a character flying in a line, trying to find an outpost for how many hours or days, trying to find it. I believe every one of us would absolutely invest 60 minutes just to have a chance to scan down an outpost. Mm -hmm. That's, well, you know, hostile place. Maybe, and, and I'm not sure if we know this, but maybe that one scan just pings the entire system in the, the radius. Be. And it would uncover seven out of seven outposts if those are there, instead of just beaming a, a, a signal at like planet three and just trying to figure out if there's an outpost near there. Uh, I, th I think the scan will ping the entire system. And then maybe during that one hour cooldown, you still have to like compare noise waves or I'm, I'm not really sure how it exactly works after you scan the object down, but there's like wave uh, wavelengths that you have to like compare and yeah. And each one gives like a different wavelength. So, so I think that's Jack that, that hopped on and joined us. So Jack, did you play EO and scanning? Yeah, Jack. I think, I, first, first, I think the cooldown is probably if you ping the system and get all these, all this noise, the hour gives you accuracy. Okay. Cause your noise isn't going to be the same hour later. So you have an hour, you ping the system, you have an hour to 
I think the hour means how long that scan is still good before you have to ping again. And you know what I'm saying? So if you ping, you hear all this noise, you have to decide where you're going with it. Then your last again, your ping becomes no good. You know what I'm trying yeah. to say? Yeah, yeah so I, like you're, you're, you're casting out your passive sonar booths, right? If we're doing the submarine game. You've thrown all that out. You've collected all your ratings above the thermal layer and then below the thermal layer. Now you've got the map of the background noise, and then you're going through and you know removing organics and you're removing, you know, your own prop noise or whatever else. So, but that that could be yeah, that, that could like the, the initial survey for the sounds for identification. And once you identify, it, maybe you can do it more frequently. Once you identify it, maybe is that is that kind of the thing? And I can see that. That'd be that'd be cool. Um, I, I think that's the, really everyone's concern is really just cool down, honestly, um, that I've talked to at least. Well, and uh, also another thing is that if someone needs scans down the system and whether or not, I mean, if they have to sit in there for a full hour to get the whole system scanned down, do you permanently see everything? You know, do you just, unless, you know, like if an outpost were to get popped or moved, like if nothing yeah, else I changes don't... and nothing moves, are you, do you have to just scan it every time you go in or is that system permanently scanned for you unless something changes outside of where people are? Well, and I think it might be one of those things, depending on how they have it hooked up, is once you quote-unquote identify something, that you hopefully there's a way to do a quick exclusion, you know, of the planets. Like, once you've scanned the planets, you know, the, you know quote-unquote signals for each of the planets, that you can uh, exclude those signals, like, automatically or have some sort of save settings to exclude them in, in future scannings. Um, I, I think the, the, the cooldown, I think seem more like a proper cooldown and not like a, you have to scan for an hour. I'm sure there's like a certain active time scan period. I, I don't know how long that would be. Um, but I, I hope that's not an hour. Uh, it seemed more like a cooldown than it was more of an active time period thing to scan. Um, well, even then, I, I, I think I think it would be just like a like like a module activation time like how 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 long do you think that would be is that a, is it a 10 second activation time is it a 30 second a one minute activation time yeah. in order to scan the entire system so when you jump into a system you automatically have that one minute cloak so yeah. how fast will you be able to scan a system well, still cloaked prior I to don't think um, getting seen, I suppose. If if it's consistent with Eve Online, which not everything is, you can't scan while you're cloaked. Um, yeah, exactly. you just like like you like you can't act well in the game. You can't currently activate a module while cloaked. So if they're tying scan to these modules, then you won't be able to scan while cloaked either. Usually, back back when I played Eve Online, you you, you went to a safe spot where nobody could mm -hmm. find you. Then you started. Yeah. Because you are, because you're gonna be looking at a sc screen playing whatever mini game they have yeah. while yeah, you're scanning, so you are going to be vulnerable. So you do want to create safe spots with it. Mm -hmm. um, I mean, you could always go to a planet, um, but someone could find you a planet. D definitely don't do it at the gate. Or, or actually, you know what? Please do it at the gate so we can come and kill you. That'd be great. <laughs> um, yeah, your 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 only bet is make your make a safe spot. Go to your safe spots. Be safe, yeah. and then you start. Yeah. Because the way they had it set up, that that thing takes up your whole screen. You're not seeing anything else. You won't be able to see your overview, right. local, anything else. Yeah. Yeah. Mine is hoping the P. So the PVP one, I don't mind there being a little bit of a cool down to. I mean, I could see. I think with like ideal skills, it's it's not more often than 15 minutes. Uh, you know, so maybe it starts at 30 and then drops to 15, but that doesn't match any of the screenshots we've seen. PVE, mm -hmm. on the other hand, um, you know, because so I love going exploring. And so, so my hope is it's basically one module and then I get the chance to scan and I'm either going to find a PVE encounter or I'm going to find a mining belt, right? Because either there one of those can, can make, you know, make a pretty good financial impact for either the players that are running in the group or for the core. Especially if the mining belts are condensed versus mm -hmm. the standard belts. Where are you guys seeing these screenshots? I, I haven't seen. Them. 
so they released them to the con senior content producers, right, Randall? Uh, well, I got them too. Yeah, we were okay. able to so share the them. Um, I'm I'm sure there's videos out there of the uh, screenshots of the wavelengths, and yep. uh, there is a there was a teaser video released, I think, uh, last week too about scanning. So yeah, I think like the, the PVE stuff. Um, and I really hope they're super awesome, but I'm really purposely trying to keep my expectations low so I'm not disappointed. Um, you know, because everyone loves wormholes and EVE Online, and I do not anticipate them to be that good. Uh, and EVE Echoes, at least initially. Um, uh, and then along with that is, you know, you know, if we're scanning down dead spaces um, with these modules, um, I would be fully prepared, uh, even though I don't want them to, but uh, I'd be fully prepared for uh, them to change um, the percentage chances of dead spaces spawning from regular noms if all of a sudden dead spaces are spawning um, uh, and are scannable. Um, unless it's a different type of dead space. If it's a different type of dead space, I don't see them messing with the numbers. Well, and but, I, I don't know if I'm confusing something that I saw earlier, but like some of the things that I saw is that the dead spaces to scan down and the dead spaces go in the wormholes, we're going to start dropping stuff to upgrade your C types, where we'd finally start seeing the Bs and the As, mm -hmm. for as far as yeah. module drops. Right. That would definitely get people excited. That'd be amazing. <gasps> they could mess with the spawn rates. That would, that's, that's, you know, who knows how that works out. <laughs> Well, so, so if they do drop, so if they drop things, you're going to take your C's, you know, so, so in, in a lot of games, what you do is you have to take your existing item, put some quantity of something on it to basically salvage it up to the next level. But in the process, you lose your C module and it has to go to a B module, as an example. Mm -hmm. So you're going to want your, your regular dead spaces you're still going to need. So maybe they stay at the regular spawn rates and then they control because so if they control the rates to the B to the upgrades, yeah. then they would gate that content to make sure things don't get too far out of balance faster than what they want. And then I it hope that's gives... how they do it. I yeah, mean, the, it's, yeah, but uh, I'm not hopeful. Um, and honestly, I think this is one of those things that let's all keep our expect expectations tempered because we haven't been, uh, you know. Yeah, cool. and we have no idea if they're going to introduce like a new uh, thing to mine either. Like whether it be ice or a new place to mine, like a moon or something yeah. like that. Well, I think in the latest trailer they hinted at ice mining. Mm -hmm. There is. I think a... I saw that too in there. I, I, you know, it's one of those that you don't want to speculate, but you see it, but you don't want to. Yeah. You know. <laughs> you don't need more to mine. All right, well, all right, all right. Of... We're running out of time, though. So that that's going to wrap it up for this week's Roundtable Tat. <laughs> <laughs> I'll see you guys next week with another chat. Hey, we could talk about this stuff all day. Like, literally. We, we You know, 15 minutes isn't enough. We, we can... Hey, well, hey, Rambo, we, we, we usually do talk about it all day. Not a speculation. We will yeah, have speculation. All right. Yeah. Well, I'll, I'll catch you guys. Oh, shit. I'm bubbled. Well, it's time to go. Peace out, guys. <laughs> Later. Bye. Ladies and gentlemen, my name is Rep, and I'd like to welcome you to Echoes of New Eden. Welcome, Rep. Welcome to Echoes of New Eden. How are you doing? I'm doing pretty good. How about yourself? I'm doing fine this evening. So uh, it, tell, tell the audience, uh, explain a little bit about yourself. Yeah, uh, so obviously my name is Rep. Uh, if you run into any of my alts, they're also going to have a rep in their name as well. I'm not particularly creative when it comes to that. Um, there's not a whole lot about me to know other than I'm one of the founders of Nilfgaard, and I play the game pretty religiously. So how did you hear about Eve Echoes? That one's actually pretty interesting. Um, for, so for the longest time, I wanted to play Eve Online, but I was never in a spot in life where I could devote enough time to it. And I also felt like if I was to join in on the EVE Online fun, I'd be a little behind the curve. So if you backtrack all the way into August when the game dropped, that was pretty shortly after my son was born. And I was just sitting in bed with my, my kid in the crib, just kind of scrolling through the app store, looking for some dumb game that I could play to pass the time whenever he was napping or whatever. Because at that point, you know, I was bouncing back and forth between taking care of him and taking care of my wife right after she had gotten out of the hospital and everything. 
and I saw Eve Echoes is like a, I don't know if it was featured or it was just like in the the new games or whatever. I saw Eve Echoes and I was like, wait, what's this? How is this like? How is this a thing? It was the first I'd heard about Eve Echoes. So I, I watched the little trailer and everything, and I was like, holy cow, this is this is Eve Online on my phone. This is like the perfect. And I saw that it was like a new app and everything. So I was like, I have a chance to actually get into the game, um, like when it's a fresh start and not fall behind the curve. And it's mobile, right? So it's not going to suck my time. So <laughs> that's that's how I heard about it. What do you like about Eve Echoes? For me, it's the granularity, the amount of depth, even though it's not as deep as Eve Online, there's still a lot of depth afforded in it as far as the way that you can build out your ships and set up your fittings and the amount of granularity that just the community provides as far as you get a different experience with everyone that you meet, every corporation, every alliance, coalition, etc. So that that really appealed to me as well as the opportunity to have an entire market and just community that's built around players and how they interact with one another. Yeah, such a unique community. It's great though. Great community. For sure. So what do you like to do in the game? That one's interesting too. Um, when I first started, again, like I had a newborn son. So I started off, got really lucky. The first corp I joined was Nilfgaard. I only joined it at the time because the game told me to, and it was the first one I saw. So I joined that and then logged off. And babies are crazy, right? They take a lot of attention. So I didn't log in for like another day or two. And when I logged back in, I saw a Discord message. It was like, hey, or sorry, uh, in game mail saying, hey, join the Discord for the corporation. I was like, okay, I'll do that. You know, I already use Discord. And the person that I met, his name was Zizi, and he was an EVE Online vet, and I believe he was a CCP employee as well. So he knew a lot about the game, provided me some really good feedback on what to do and everything. And I started off wanting to do my PvE, because uh, that was kind of the, the way they were pushing me, was go, go get ISK, invest it in Plex early on. But having a kid, I died a lot, just because he'd start crying or need my attention or whatever, and I'd just come back to a blown up ship. So I moved into industry. Uh, for quite a long time. And I was really big about my spreadsheets and I did all the industry for my corporation. It was lots of fun. I enjoyed giving good prices to people and everything. Uh, but then I had some personal stuff happen in my life and I had to take a break from the game. And when I came back, my real life situation was a little bit different and I was able to put more time into the game. So I was like, okay, I'm going to start doing PVE and PVP. And that's kind of where I am today is ratting and whatnot isn't particularly exciting at this point. And I have plenty of funds from my earlier activities in the game so pvp pvp is what i like to do in the game right now and you know i might not be the best at it but i get my fair share of kills and i get more than my more than my fair share of kill mails or death <laughs> mails rather right and then a uh, quick question that i'm gonna hit you with right here the uh your son what day what what's his birthday august 3rd okay so uh he's he's slightly less old than my daughter she was born on july 31st so right before the game came out okay so you feel me on that <laughs> babies can get in the way a little bit yeah and to the same extent i downloaded it knowing i got into eve echoes knowing that i'm going to be having some time off and i'm going to need something to do <laughs> so yeah right so you got a thing out in space it's a coliseum neutral true. neutral citadel tell us about this coliseum yeah, absolutely. So this citadel, it is named Colosseum, and it is located in MTAC OEE8, which is one jump from Tazy. I have it underneath a corporation that ticker is Newt, N-E-U-T, and the corporation name is Tournament. It's a free port citadel, citadel rather, and for those of you that aren't aware, what that means is, is that it's open to everybody. Uh, the settings on it allow any pilot to dock and interact to use industrial features like reverse engineering or shipbuilding, repair their ship, set it as home station, uh, open a corp office, all those things. That's that's open to absolutely everybody. So what's the purpose of this citadel? So the purpose is it's kind of multifaceted. Uh, like I mentioned, what I like to do in the game right now is PvP. And I feel like there's only a few main ways that you can accomplish that in the game. Obviously, one of the most prevalent ones are CTAs. I think most of your listeners and most of the people in Eve Echoes are part of a corporation or an alliance. And again, most of those people are aware of the ongoing war and other wars that have gone on. And you get a ping on Discord saying, hey, we have this the CTA, this call to action. We need you to be here at this time to do this objective. And you show up. 
And it might be a smaller one, that's cool, or it might be a really big one. It's a structure-based CTA where you're defending or attacking a timer. And as fun as that sounds, when you actually get on grid, I think most people identify with the problem of you warp in and you immediately disconnect, you get a black screen, you have trouble logging back in or staying connected to the game. So that's that's the main one of the main kinds of PvP that you can get into. And for a lot of people, it isn't particularly accessible. Outside of that, you have roams where you grab maybe interceptors, frigates, cruisers, something relatively lightweight, and you just jump around in enemy territory and hope that you find miners or small fleets, people that are unsuspecting to gank, if you will, and just blow them up. And that can be fun too, and for me is oftentimes more fun than going and doing these CTAs because it's almost unplayable content for me. But the problem with the second one, and in a lot of instances, the first one as well, is the amount of time that it takes. One way or another, you're gonna be making a lot of jumps you might not actually get the content you were looking for. You might find nobody, your side or the enemy side might pull out and you're left without anything. And so what I'm trying to do is bridge that gap. I feel like a lot of people have noticed there's a little bit of PVP content that you can get in low sec like Tama, where there's almost always some PVP going on, usually like small gangs of people roaming around and Tama going to clusters and special anomalies and blowing each other up. And so the kind of the, the purpose of the Citadel, in and of itself, it doesn't really accomplish anything, right? There's there's a NPC station a jump away in Tazy. So why put it in MTACO? And really the purpose of that was just to make a statement, to put something on the map and give people something to look at and realize that not only am I serious, but maybe the community that gathers around it is serious as well. And so the objective there ultimately is to turn MTACO into the Tama of Nullsec. And what I mean by that is I want it to be a system that you can jump to at any time uh, when you only have maybe a little bit of time on your hands, 15 minutes, 30 minutes, what, what it may be, where you can jump in and hopefully find an engagement to be able to PvP, enjoy that aspect of the game, and then dock up at a Citadel, claim your shit back, repair it, what have you, log out, and then come back and enjoy it another day. Uh, that's that's the purpose of the citadel as a whole <laughs> that's pretty great that's uh yeah that's a lot to take in so you you'll be running tournaments and pvp style what just uh like brackets or 1v1s or is this going to be kind of small gang what, what kind of pvp are we going to look forward to seeing here yeah so like I mentioned, the first part of it is turning it into the Tama of Nullsec, but I think I think there can be more to it than that. And so to go hand in hand with that, I started a Discord community called NPSI, which for those of you that have played EVE Online, or you know, maybe it's been perpetuated a little bit in EVE Echoes as well, NPSI means not purple, shoot it. And what that means is if you're in a fleet, those are the only people that you're not obliged to shoot. And if you come across any other pilot, you'll shoot them. And so that was the other thing to go into also is that PVP as a solo pilot isn't always feasible. And I wanted to make a community that regardless of your affiliations with corps, alliances, or coalitions, you could team up with other like-minded pilots, get to know new people, and have a good time. And so if they wanted to take these NPSI fleets in or out of MTACO, whether it's uh, you know it's for PvP or they just want to get together and go rat or do story missions, they could do that too. Just make it kind of a a melting pot for people to just get to know each other on the other side of the war. Um, but outside of that also, I wanted to add more opportunities for a different type of PvP. And so as this Discord community is growing and I'm keeping tabs on you know how active it is and whatnot, I'm putting together uh, a tournament that I want to run. And the exact size and feasibility of this tournament will be dependent on how many people are interested in even participating. But ultimately what I'd like to get to is doing a bracket of maybe four different groups or eight different groups, each with 10 players plus bench warmers, and just schedule a time for everyone to get together and fight it out for clout and for some ISK prizes. I'll throw in a few billion ISK or maybe a battleship or faction battleship, some, some nice prize in there to, to encourage the fighting, plus whatever the community might want to add. But I, what I was thinking is that these groups, they don't necessarily, though they can, they don't necessarily have to be formed from a corporation or an alliance. So certainly if an alliance want to be like, yeah, these are who we're going to send to represent us. It could also just be one of those MPSI groups, some friends that just want to get in there and, and fight one another. 
That's interesting you said that. Uh, a, a corp or an alliance can send a group to the tournament just to represent them. That's that's something that other alliances, you know, and corporations could probably look into. Yeah. Yeah, I think that'd be a lot of fun. And if any of the listeners that you have represent a corporate alliance or a group of players that might be interested in that, they're more than welcome to reach out to me on that Discord or my personal Discord uh, ID and just send me a DM and let me know if you're interested or not. And we can start networking and figuring out when a good time to schedule this kind of thing would be. But I think it's a good opportunity for friendly competition between people that's a bit more tangible than the war. Because <laughs> as it stands, I feel with the current state of the game and balancing and whatnot, war doesn't really accomplish a whole lot. For the most part, it's just beating of chests on both sides, you know, to just pad different people's egos. And it doesn't really accomplish anything. Whereas, while well, a tournament won't accomplish anything either, it has a very decisive victor. And it provides a very decisive amount of clout to that victor. Right, yeah. Plus the war, depending on who you talk to, it's all timers right now. It's all just people taking shields or defending stuff like that. So not very yeah. not very much um, progression going on in the war right now. So content, uh, it, at least different content, um, would be great to have. So, yeah. Will there be a buy-in for this tournament, or have you not decided anything like that yet? I haven't decided that yet. For the longest time, my approach to content, both at my own corpse level and just whenever I extend that out to either my alliance or coalition or to now, uh, pilots in general, is to make it as accessible as possible. So maybe for the first one, I might not do a buy-in. Maybe future ones I will if I feel that can add to the prize pool. But I think I'll try to make it as accessible as possible and just kind of show my face and show my willingness to produce that content for people and provide the entire prize pool out of my pocket initially. You know, as you're talking, I'm sort of having this vision of it, and I'm not sure exactly how much time or how depth you want to go into it, but I I, I could picture this being something like the Olympics, where a, a corporation or alliance, they send their team, whether it be a, a solo person, a team of six, a team of 10, a team of 12, whatever it may, may be, 50, uh, <laughs> you know, depending on how big you want to get it, and I mean they go through the brackets and ultimately the winner represents the corporate alliance. Right. And then they get the yeah, prizes definitely. on top of that. I, man, I, it's got so much potential there. And then of course, you know, they get the spotlight, say, Hey, we won the tournament, right? See you next yeah. month for another tournament. Or, you know, we'll, we'll be here again that we're the Kings of the Hill. So, you know, take it, take your chance next time and, and, uh, and see if they can be defeated. So man, that's actually got some, extreme potential i'd like to see yeah that's that's the direction i want to go with it to where it gains recognition i'd like for content creators to reach out to me i've already reached out to several to kind of cover what's going on with that hopefully i'll i'll get off my ass and produce a little bit of my own content as well and i'd like to see it to a point where not only are people excited to participate in it but they're also using it as a recruitment tactic of hey you should join my corp we're the three four time winners of you know of this tournament that's going on or you know we have we have this clout we have this representation that we we're real we we know what we're doing we're good at it and we can teach you to do the same uh just like with the olympics right you know people like to show that they're better than everybody else and what better way to do it than a community supported tournament yeah so have you heard of the uh degenerate gambling club I can't say I have, although I'm already interested based off that limited uh, introduction. <laughs> I, I'm going to send you a link to their Discord. And uh, so they do ISK betting outside of the game. And uh, I, I can explain it all this off air. But I think that you could possibly open up a section on their Discord for people to place bets on some of these teams and uh, potentially make it that way too. And, and it, it, even if it's somebody that's not part of the tournament, I, I look at it as betting on the horses at a horse race. I could put I could put ISK on every single person and then still come out on top, right? So maybe they can run it something like that uh, if that's something that people would be interested in doing. There could be good yeah. ISK in that. So, you know, favorability and odds. Cool. Uh, you know, we can go pretty in depth. Of sports betting in general is really in depth. <laughs> but yeah, uh, it, you know, since the tournament really still has to happen, you know, first off, uh, it's just going to evolve from there, right? And then it's going to get more and more complex. And then it, you know, 
if betting gets involved too, then there's going to be that side. So yeah, just crazy. I'll send you the link to Degenerate Gambling Club. So good group of guys over there. Yeah, I look forward to that. And I, I am open to any and all collaboration with other content creators or you know figureheads within Evecos to make this more successful and to eliminate any suspicions or anything along those lines that people have about what I'm doing here. So why MTAC O, one jump away from Tazy? Why this location? So when you look at the star map with the intent to place something like this, you have to be a little careful, right? I couldn't, I mean, I could, but it might not have been advisable for me to drop it just anywhere. A few of the things that I had in my mind when doing it was accessibility. So the closer I can have it to Nullsec, the closer I can have it to Jita, the more people that are going to be able to access it and get to it in a decent amount of time. So that was one of the main things. On top of that, I wanted to pick somewhere that didn't have too many other groups around it. I didn't want to look like I was trying to take Sov from somebody else or anything along those lines. And just from looking at the star map, MTAC O looked like the most suitable place for that. So that's that's why I put it there. And you've received some backlash about this, um, possibly SHH. You might have fireflies on your back trying to destroy it, um, mostly because it's a high sec route, or is this a territory or a personal beef with them? Yeah, there's been a little bit of backlash. So whenever I initially was going out to do this, obviously there was a little bit of OPSEC that had to come into play also, right? When you're dropping something worth like 15 bill or whatever they are, you know, you don't necessarily want to advertise to everybody and their brother exactly where you're putting it and when. So I tried to reach out to as many people as I could within the Discord circles that I already have. And most people I spoke to were pretty, pretty cool about it. Uh, that being said, I didn't have any real good contact information for Fireflies or for SHH. Um, Fireflies, that's primarily due, I think, to kind of a language barrier. But if any of your listeners have ties to them or could get me in touch with them, I'd be more than happy to sit through Google Translate or whatever we need to do to maybe kind of break that barrier down and kind of level with one another. But with that being said, whenever it was deployed, Fireflies did put up a CTA to take it down. And I ended up having a Pew No, they came out and they defended it and were able to push them back. So it got its successful anchoring. Um, outside of that, I am tracking a little bit of backlash from SHH. Not exactly sure where they stand. I've spoken to a few line members uh, that I've come across in different Discord circles, and they seem pretty cool about it. But the message that I'm getting from their Diplo and their leadership across like Reddit and just screenshots I've seen seems to be a little unsupportive. Um, I think that they consider this their territory, and it may very well be. Uh, I'm not too well versed on the geopolitosphere of Evetco's. Um, it's also a high sec route, so they might feel like you know maybe this is being set up as a permanent gate camp or whatever. My counter argument to that is the station doesn't mean anything. It's it's a dot on the map. It's pixels on the map to point to me being serious about this whole thing. If I wanted to set up a permanent gate camp, I could do that just as easily basing out of the NPC station in Tazy. So again, if anybody has good contacts with these guys, or if any of your listeners happen to be those guys, if they want to reach out to me, I'm more than happy to iron out any disputes and let them know what I'm really about. Now the high sec route one could be a big one. Um, and maybe not for SHH as much as it is for Firefly since it's uh, since they live due north of that. And uh, going into Venal and Tenal, they, uh, they have to go through that system. So I think their safety is what they want, regardless if Tazy is one jump out. Um, yeah, regardless, just they, they want to make sure that they cannot use a place such as the tournament to stage gate camps out of basically right to to go back and reship right away and not have the convenience of or the inconvenience i should say of having to get potted back to tazy and then take a jump so there there's a inconvenience convenience factor there that a citadel does provide and and another one i could see too is sure it's one jump away from tazy but it's still a 
free port for basically the entire galaxy that has access to it to stage there, right? So I know it's one jump closer into NullSec, but that's one jump closer to SHH territory. They could see that as a threat, and same, same for Fireflies. Now, if you had that on lockdown and say, okay, nobody can access this, then that may change their perception on it. I, I just don't know. But I, I could see that as being uh, an, an, an issue as to all of their enemies can all stage in that one regardless, right? So, but I'm, I'm just tossing out there. I don't know what they think as far as that regards, but uh, it could be a thing. Yeah, and I, I could see those points too, but I might disagree with some of them, although I can see it. Um, yeah, I just, I just want to make it clear to them that's that's not the objective with it. When it comes to like staging gate camps and whatnot, you know the the folks, the fine folks over in Fireflies and SHH, they can do the exact same thing, right? It's a, it's an open port, and at the end of the day, gate camps come and go. They get reported by everybody and their brother. I mean, I think all of us have intel channels on our discords that inform us of active gate camps and whatnot, and it's easy enough to get around them. You may be able to strive to support not gate camping that system. To crash people that do want to gate camp that system and for the people that do want to travel through and that's it just let them go why, why why do they have to worry about the local being 120 and then not being able to get their stuff through safely right so there, there's there's that but also too you can kind of advertise it as uh, and, and I'm not telling you what to do. I'm just <laughs> throwing ideas out there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, you, you could advertise it as, hey, you know, we got some PvP. Let's go meet at Planet 8 or let's go meet at the Sun. Let's let's stage PvP only in this system at planets or mining belts or, you know, or at the Citadel itself, 100 off, whatever. Uh, try and get them away from the gates rather so people don't have such beef with it. Yeah, absolutely. And that's the direction I want to take it to where there's a lot of organized PvP going on. And I'd like to see more people joining into that Discord and reporting when they see gate camps and stuff. And I'd like to see it kind of turn into a red versus blue type of thing where, you know, there's a gate camp going on, whether it's from an MPSI fleet or a corporation or whatever. And someone pings it in the Discord and it's like, hey, there's an active gate camp on Tazy Gate or ETACO Gate. Let's form up at the Citadel and let's go bust it. Like that's that's the kind of thing that I want to see going on where you have a plethora of 1v1 or small gang PvP and a bit larger groups going to bust camps and that sort of thing. And and, and try to advocate for people true to their word. Uh, and I say that I, I went through your system the other day and in local, uh, as somebody from a no fleet said, hey, does anybody want to 1v1 me? I'm like, okay, okay. well... I, I see that, but if I were to accept that and meet him at the sun, who's to say he's not going to come in with a, a fleet of eight and, you know, gangbang somebody uh, that just may have a, like a Vexor Navy issue or something that, you know, was honestly there just to be a, a 1v1 fight? Yeah, I can t totally see that. And ultimately, right, I can't control what other pilots do, but I am trying to encourage that gentleman's pact between people you know that are operating in MTACO. and furthermore in the rules that i set up for the server uh, i made it clear that one diplomacy doesn't exist what happens happens but the second rule is honor among pirates and the main rule the main thing i was trying to get at there is as far as people that are wanting to set up an mpsi fleet people that aren't normally affiliated with one another if i get intel that they are joining NPSI fleets and then selling them out, you know, providing a warp in or location, things like that, with the intents to take that fleet down from the inside, that I'll ban them from the Discord along my strikeout system and basically put them on a blacklist, if you will, of people that don't follow that, that gentleman's code. So I do want to make it fair. I want to have honor among pirates, but at the same time, it can't be entirely controlled. Um, and I would like to see kind of a vindictive spirit amongst the pirates that are operating out of there to strike back at people that maybe aren't being fully transparent in what they're doing. And honorable, yeah. Yeah. So the Citadel is subject for attacks regardless. How are you... Of course. How are you able to defend it? Who wants to take it down? So as far as people that wants to take it down, the only people I'm tracking that wants to take it down are FF. 
I've gotten a little bit of intel, a screenshot from, uh, I think his Discord name is Christian Bishop, saying that it sounds like something they'll destroy. But that didn't seem like a total, like, yep, we're going to have a CT on it next week kind of thing. Um, and that could have just be needs a little bit more information or whatever. But right now, the only active threat that I'm tracking, people that want to take it down, is Fireflies. As far as how I'm going to defend it, I like to use the oxymoron of saying that I have no friends. Uh, what I mean by that is I've got no please stop on a retainer. I have them on contract. If there is a threat, there will be a no fleet there to defend it. They were there for the anchoring and they will be there for any other defense that needs to happen. Now, with that being said, I also have an agreement with them of if we're not on contract, we're fair game. Uh, I plan on hiring them for my own little roams and stuff so I can have some fun. But outside of that, like if we're not actively on contract, they're not purple. I'm going to shoot them and they're going to shoot me. So they're not my allies. They're just they're just my mercs. <laughs> you definitely have bigger pockets than I do. Holy smokes. That's a lot. Yeah. And if it comes down to it also, as far as maybe there's a, a focused attack from other people, um, I'm not opposed if someone reaches out to me and says, hey, you know, we really like your idea, what you're doing with this. Let us know if there's a way we can help defend it if it comes on, you know, under a threat. By all means, I'd love to see the community reaching out to, in my mind, and a community asset to help defend that community asset. And if there is, you know, if it gets taken down into to armor, into hole, and I have that uh, one week out, you know, CTA, I'll make a Reddit post about it and I'll try to hype it up and get as many people there as possible. Because if it comes down to a group of people want to destroy it, a group of people want to save it, and another group of people just want to see some things die, and a bunch, all these fleets warp in, it, it could have the potential of being a very large battle. And I'm interested in seeing what happens after either the timer fails and the Citadel is lost, or it succeeds and it's guarded, what that multitude of people do to each other immediately after. I think that could be quite entertaining. <laughs> Royal Rumble. Yeah, yeah. Exactly. So you mentioned the Reddit post, you got your Discord on it. So how much community support does this have in New Eden right now? So, so far, looking at the Discord, let me open that up right now. Look at members. There's 107 members in the Discord right now. It's somewhat active as far as people chatting and stuff, pinging me every now and then asking questions. Um, it's it's picking up a little bit of steam. I've seen some fights going on in there. I've been involved in some fights going on in there. And it's been pretty fun. Uh, I've gotten some DMs from some folks that seem pretty interested in it. I've gotten DMs from certain FCs or like corporation leaders saying, hey, I like this idea. Uh, I'm not going to actively attack this or participate in a CTA that does attack it. So there's some pretty good coverage from different corporations on both sides of the war uh, that aren't interested in taking it out. So I think for that reason, it has a pretty good shot at survivability. And I'm hoping that as I get the word out and I communicate with more individuals and content creators and people see what it's about and what I'm about, that that just kind of perpetuates itself. So aside from the survivability of the Citadel, what's the, what's the end goal? So the end goal is to make it, like I mentioned, that, that Tama of Nullsec, but also for Nettie used to look at it and to recognize me as a content creator and to recognize this station and this system as being a community hub. And my hope, my ultimate hope, is that I can get a nice tournament scheduled that Nettie's picks up on and they maybe make a medal, like an in-game medal or something for the victors or like first, second, third type of thing. That, that they recognize that they recognize the community that's operating out of it and they reward that activity and that devotion to gameplay because we all we all play for the same reason to enjoy the game and I hope that they recognize that and I also hope for it to be recognized by the larger figureheads across New Eden you know leaders of certain coalitions or alliances uh, different content creators or whatnot and hopefully that they also maybe want to chip in to prize pools or just notoriety maybe covering it on news type things and saying, yeah, this corp won, they're, they're badasses, that kind of thing. Just to make it a, a table for people to sit down at and enjoy the game. Right. Yeah, and they can, uh, if they do do custom medals, uh, Olympics style custom medals, bronze, silver, gold, stuff like that. It, we'll see what they uh, have to say about that if they do get involved. Um, so that's all I got, my man. What, what else? Uh, you got any closing thoughts or shout outs? All right, closing thoughts and shout outs. Let's see. I mean, in summary, I just want it to be clear to everybody that this does not have any affiliation to Nilfgaard or to the Constant Coalition. 
my main account is indeed part of Nilfgaard. But I've already warned my guys, I've already warned my pilots that if I'm operating an MPSI fleet and I decide to go through our own home territory and they're not in my fleet, they're going to die. I don't really care too much about diplomacy. Those will be put straight into my, you know, trash item in the in the email. <laughs> like they're going straight to trash. Um, it doesn't have anything to do with them. And by all means, if they want to participate, whether from my corp or my alliance, they are more than welcome to. But as far as affiliations go, there are none. I, I do what I want at the end of the day. <laughs> and then as far as shout outs go, definitely want to shout out No Please Stop. Definitely want to shout out Tahini for and Eisenhower for wanting to work with me and uh, providing that support to make sure that it's even a thing we can be talking about right now. So big shout out to them. They're, they're a good group of guys. Awesome, man. Well, thanks for uh, sitting down and chatting with me today. And uh, I, I hope for the best. I, I'm really excited for this thing to take off. And uh, I'm going to be checking. I'm going to join your Discord. I'm going to be checking for some content. Yeah, absolutely. So everyone just stay tuned for the uh, the announcement for that tournament. I should have it out. Hopefully by next weekend, I'll, I'll be getting some balls rolling. So if any of you are interested, just shoot me a DM or hop in that Discord. All right, man. Take it easy and uh, fly safe. You too. Well, that wraps it up for this week. If you like the show, please review it on Apple Podcasts or on my Discord. Any feedback is appreciated. Elantria over at Borg sponsors this show. We are Borg. We are family. That's their motto. They are a very large organization that has industry and mining, also PvP-focused programs, just as top-notch as some of them top-notch corps out there. See what I did there? They look out for all their drones in the collective. They have a great community both in and out of the game. They have sci-fi fans, D&D fans, and fans of other RPGs. And there's always someone to talk to. You can become one with the Borg. Life in Nullsec is good, full of riches to be had, and you can be a part of it. Go check out Borg. Resistance is futile. And maybe if you're up to it, you can join my Discord. You can submit your very own corp ad, or you can just come by and show support and hang out. I'll leave that link in the description. Also, if you want even more Eve Echoes news and a deeper dive into what's going on around New Eden, go check out Damon Zell over on YouTube on his show Echoes from the Front, where he goes over game news, does weekly SOV updates, and much more. So that's it. Thank you everybody for listening. Take care. Fly safe, and I will see you next week.